everybody. Welcome to this week's edition of the Growing Faith Podcast. We're so glad you've joined us through whatever means you're watching or listening to this. We're here to talk about the previous week's sermon from Luke chapter 11. And so just a few questions from that, Pastor Jared. One of the first questions that comes to mind is you talked about the Holy Spirit, the relationship with the Holy Spirit in our lives, and the command to not quench or grieve the Holy Spirit. First off, can you define and explain the differences between quenching and grieving the Holy Spirit? Sure, yeah. First Thessalonians 5, 19 is where it says, do not quench the Spirit. And Ephesians 4, 30, where it says, do not grieve the Holy Spirit. Uh, so when we're looking at grieving the Holy Spirit, it is a more active um, sense of commission. Uh, in other words, the Spirit of God has been prompting us um, that something is wrong, convicting of, convicting us of some kind of sin. And instead of being repentant, we continue in that. And so we are grieving actively the Holy Spirit. Uh, quenching uh, the Spirit, as found in 1 Thessalonians 5.19, is really more of a, a sin of omission, uh, where maybe the Spirit of God is prompting us to do something, maybe to speak to somebody or uh, to be generous in some way, or that any number of things the Spirit of God can direct us in. But instead of actively pursuing that, we kind of freeze up uh, and we refuse to obey in that way uh, for whatever reasons. And so the kind of two sides of the same coin in that we're sinning against God through the Holy Spirit, uh, whether by omission or commission. And one of the fruits of these acts is it results in dryness in the walk of the Christian's life. It results in spiritual dryness. And so the question we have is, have either of you personally, and we'll start with David James, experienced seasons of dryness spiritually? And if so, what were some of the warning signs or um, the benchmarks that revealed to you that you were feeling that way? Yeah, so definitely. Um, there's been seasons of dryness in my life, um, you know, especially in my teenage years, right? And so... Uh, you know, early high school, you know, I, I felt myself, you know, in the seasons of dryness and I knew that I was there through a couple things. Um, the first thing was I didn't really desire to gather with other believers in that season. I wasn't looking forward to the gathering on Sunday morning, Wednesday night, Sunday night, whenever it was. Um, I didn't want to be there. Right. And then, you know, so that was a that was a sign, you know, there's something wrong there. Um, cause we should get, we should want together. We should desire that. Um, so that was the first sign. And then, you know, one of the other signs was, you know, I didn't really have a desire to read God's word. I knew it was something that I was going to continue to do and fighting through those feelings. So like, you know, sometimes we feel a certain way. I feel happy. I feel sad. You know, I feel like I want to do this. I don't feel like doing that. You know, as a lot of kids tell their parents, you know, with chores or something, but you know, I think in the We'll probably get into this in just a second, but that was one of the things is I didn't feel like doing this or doing that. I didn't feel like talking to God because, oh, my life's in, you know, in this season of dryness, so does God even really care about me? might have been some of the thoughts that were going through through my mind. So those were some of the, I guess, early in seasons that, that, that I've gone through that, those are some of the early signs of, okay, I need to, re- I need to understand and realize this is, this is going on. Yeah. So, Jared, yeah. same. Yeah, I would... I agree. Um, a lot of it is your emotional energy. Um, you know, you may read the Word of God, but it, now it's more routine. It's it's a, a rut. It's a habit, and there's not really life um, in it, or getting anything out of it. Um, and you don't really feel like praising God. Um, you don't feel like praying. Um, and when you do pray, it has a feeling, a sensation of I don't really know if God even is caring or listening. And I don't even know if I really care that he cares. Um, and I think this is the scary part, is when you don't care that you don't care. Um, and and that, um, that is really when dryness is, is there at its peak. And, and there have been some seasons when it's like, I don't care that I don't care. Um, and, but just to be honest, that is probably the scariest seasons, especially as I look back on it. Um, that can happen in my life. So yeah, that's that's been there. It, it's and and it's, it's probably helpful to know that that happens to people. Mm-hmm. Um, humans are cyclical and 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 emotional rise and fall. Um, and so so some of that is normal. Um, and just to realize that's normal is helpful. But not to minimize that it could be other reasons as well, which I 
think probably we want to talk about. Yeah, and so that brings up the next question of, in those seasons of dry, spiritual dryness, what are steps that you took and what are steps that we should take as followers of Christ in rectifying that issue and um, being renewed in a sense of our love and joy of worshiping and having that union with Christ? Yeah. You guys want to go at it or you want me to just go into it? Well, I think, so like, I'll, I'll start out, I guess. I think the the first thing um, is I think there's some practical steps. Um, and I think the first practical step is, again, like I just said, understanding that you're there, knowing that. Um, I think the second practical step, uh, after you've gotten on that first thing, um, is reaching out for help. You know, continually praying and asking God to show himself, reveal himself to you in that time. But even... Um, behind that, and I say behind that because that's, that's you know, in your relationship with God, that's your primary relationship. It's, it's you and God. Mm-hmm. Um, but even behind that, reaching out to other Christians, other believers, saying, man, I, man or woman, whether you're female or male, you know, I'm feeling, you know, this way. And again, we talked about emotions. So that feeling word is a little complicated there, but like, this is what I'm going through. Can you pray for me? Can you walk through this with me? Can you walk side by side with me as I try to, um, you know, meet that, meet that, meet this at its root, you know, put this out at its root. So those are the two practical steps, you know, and there's a few more behind that, but I'll stop there. Jared will probably expand on them. But I think even more importantly than that, um, what would help me in those times um, is really thinking back to my conversion moment in life, my conversion you know, from being a, a lost sinner to now being welcomed into the family of God and, re, and think about the joy of my salvation. Because when you think about the joy of your salvation, you reflect on that, you let that drive your day, that drive your week, uh, that does such a world of difference in really meeting this spiritual dryness head on. So that's, I mean, that's, that's really what helped me in life and what continuously continuously helps me even on the day-to-day basis when I wake up sometimes and I'm just like man I don't feel you know joyful today you know I don't feel you know I am not finding life in the reading of word the word this morning or this evening whenever you do it I am just reading it because it's something that I've it's a habit that I know that I need to be doing but like just thinking back to the joy of your salvation and letting it propel you forward mm-hmm. so that's what I yeah well, I think, you know, physically, you got to look at it physically, emotionally, and spiritually. Uh, physically, it could be as simply as, I haven't been sleeping. Um, if I don't sleep uh, emotionally, I'm, I'm not going to be there. Um, and so sometimes it's just, is this a season where I've just been flat out exhausted? Maybe the real answer is, I, I, I got to go to bed. Um, it could be emotional as well as if it's been a heavy stress season. Um, for instance, like what we're going through now um, it wouldn't be surprising to me that after maybe a couple, two or three months, if we really get dry, spiritually kind of burn out um, because of this intense stress of what's going on. Uh, so something to think about that as well is what kind of stress emotionally is happening. Then spiritually, um, and this is where I was talking about in the sermon is, you know, what's what's happened with my my relationship with Jesus Christ? And, and so there's an acronym called DRY, um, which I've utilized at different times in my life, where D stands for dependence. Is there something I'm not depending in God about and I, I may be leaning on something else too much? Um, R is repentance. So uh, maybe a question to ask yourself and ask, I ask myself is, when was the last time... Um, I experienced the joy of Christ. Uh, what was the last thing Jesus told me to do? Um, have I been disobedient in that in some form, some fashion? And so maybe it's to, to go back to repentance and asking the Lord, hey, give me some, Lord, give me insight. Uh, what what needs to be repented of in my life? And that becomes my prayer then. Um, why is yielded? Um, and it's very similar. Um, how am I not yielding? And so it goes back to the grieve and quench uh, aspect of it. Um, and so I, I try to ask God, because we can be blind, uh, and we'll be blind to it, and we don't know it until we are dry. And so that's where God's prompting us to go to Him and, and open up our eyes to see what things are in our lives. Um, and then if all those things have been done, and, and I've prayed these things, and I've tried to be honest as best as I can, 
Um, it could very well be that God just has a season in my life without emotion. And that's extremely hard. We're a lot more emotional than we really want to admit. And, you know, we were talking about this before of, about the, the, the train and the engine of truth driving us and then mm-hmm. belief and then feeling comes alongside of that. But feeling really gets to the engine a lot more than we really want to admit. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that's when seasons depression comes in. You don't feel like waking up and the, the feelings are gone. In that, God's still working. And it might be that God's teaching us to go by his word alone without the feeling. And I, I hope that doesn't happen to us, but it does happen to people. And, it, and that might be thing, something to consider as well in that time. It's like, God, you know what I need. And if you don't provide the emotional energy, I trust that I don't need it at this time and I'm going to trust you in it. So th- those have been some things. And then if it's not those, change routine. I'm going to pray my prayers or I'm going to sing my prayers or I'm going to go to someone like Psalms. I'm going to go to other people's prayers or songs and let that speak into my heart. I'm going to start walking uh, as I worship and read the Word of God. I mean, things like that, sometimes different settings can be helpful as well. And so I'm looking at, it's um, John 15, 5, 14, 5, the abide, I'm the vine, you are the branches, abide me. 15, um, 5, yeah. John 15, 5, yeah. And he's talking about... Um, abiding in Christ. And so ultimately what that looks like is obedience. And so it was interesting reading the, I believe it was Psalm 44 in our reading through Psalms. It talks about how they're in a season of life as Israel. The sons of Korah are complaining. They're like, you know, we've been walking in obedience. We've heard the ways you've worked before, but now we're scattered all over the place. I think it talks about the jackals are coming onto, onto us. And it's like, we have what do we do? You're silent. We don't hear from you. Um, but the resolve is to trust in Christ. Um, and so I think about the movie Frozen 2, um, which I know Jared's seen. Have you seen Frozen? The Frozen movies? I have not seen the Frozen series. Uh, I will tell you why. <laughs> why. First of all, I didn't want to jump on the bandwagon with everybody else. So congratulations to you guys for jumping on that bandwagon. <laughs> <laughs> but the second reason is because I watched the OG like snowman movies, Frosty. Right? You know, as a child, I watched it like three times a day. Like in the summer, too? Oh, in the summer, absolutely. <laughs> because then, you know, living in North Carolina, in the summer, you're just craving snow. And then in the winter, you're honestly still just craving snow because we don't get much of it here. Right. So, so yeah. Olaf is just a frosty wannabe. Pretty much. <laughs> Either a frosty wannabe or he's like. Frosty's like great grandson or something. I don't know, <laughs> something like that. Well, anyway, and the and so this is a spoiler alert for people. So if you're really like dead set, well, on let me just Frozen say, the Frozen Two has a great Christ figure in it. Yes, um, we'll let you watch it and figure it out. Right, and so yeah, we'll that, try. That's it. your homework. It's my right. homework. Okay, <laughs> we'll avoid spoilers. But basically, there's this moment in the movie where everything's gone wrong, and so one of the lead characters she feels abandoned by her sister. She's lost a loved one, and so it's this moment of hopelessness. And the song is beautiful because it sings about having no hope, and that's, you know, I love those things. Um, <laughs> but it talks about within that. Wah, wah, wah. <laughs> <laughs> but so it re- addresses the fact that the situation seems completely hopeless, but what I'm going to continue to do is just the next right thing. And I'm going to keep moving forward, keep taking the steps forward. And, and ultimately, that's what we look towards Christ, is when those times where we see distance, we begin with repentance. We begin with taking those steps of turning away from our sin. I like the Beatitudes really maps out beautifully, walking through repentance, first feeling the, um, like your meekness before God, how unworthy you are before God, mourning over your sin, and then going to him in repentance. So there's this grieving to repentance, and then the fruit that comes from that. Um, and ultimately, what that looks like is just walking in obedience, taking those first steps of obedience, even when you see God seems distant, um, because God promises to be near to us um, in those times. And so there may be, like you said, a season of life where we have that dryness. Um, but if we walk in obedience, we continue to seek after abiding in Christ. He'll be faithful, um, and there will be that time where we're restored with joy. Um, it may be in this lifetime, um, or it might not be in the way that we desire um, in every season of life, but ultimately we can trust in the assurance of Christ's salvation. So that is uh, that wraps up our time together. Thank you guys for joining us on this week's edition of the Growing Faith Podcast Q&A-ish segment. Um, and where we talked about Frozen. So we hope you all have a good weekend, and uh, we'll talk to you soon.